Hello, and thank you for joining us for this episode of Recipe Share, a program on AADL TV where we take a few minutes to talk about recipes in a featured category. Today's category is Better with Bacon. I'm Elizabeth, and as usual, I'm joined today by Katie and Beth to tell us about their recipes. So, Katie, why don't you tell us what you made this week? Sure, I'm happy to. This is an exciting category, I think, for all of us. So, um, the recipe that I chose to share today is comes from this book that I got from the library. This is Zingerman's Guide to Better Bacon by Ari Weinswig. Um, and this book is, <laughs> if you want to know everything that there is to know about bacon, highly suggest checking this out. It's like more than the first half of it is just like glossary of bacon terms, history of bacon, and all these influential people who have gone into making what bacon is today. I did not read all of that. I flipped to the end of the book where the recipes were, and I ended up finding this recipe for <clears throat> Wittenberg splits. And this recipe is uh, by the family of Tanya Newski, who's featured earlier in this book. They're a Wisconsin bacon making family. And this is how they grew up eating hot dogs. And so it says they're not hard to make and they really are darned good. And I would I definitely would agree with that. Um, so it's really, really simple. All you do is you get some jumbo hot dogs. So like the bigger, the better hot dogs here. And then you, um, cut them, split them lengthwise, but leaving a little bit at the bottom. So your hot dogs still stay intact, but you've got a split in the middle of them. And then in that split, you put a slice of sharp cheddar cheese and, uh, it says the older, the better. You know how Zingerman says, you know, they like their fancy cheese. Uh, and then you take a slice of dill pickle. Uh, you can use uh, dill pickle rounds here too. I did that and that worked fine. And you just stick that right in the split as well. And then you take the whole thing and you wrap it around it. Two slices of bacon. Um, I just used one slice of bacon. It was plenty. I don't know if my bacon was like extra <laughs> large or whatever, but one was fine. It wrapped around. I've got a picture of what all that looks like before um, cooking it. This recipe calls for broiling it in the oven. And the first time I made this, I did it on the grill. And that worked just fine. It was great. It was a nice way to do this for a bunch of people. Um, and But later, I did do this just for myself in the oven. So it works great both ways. You just cook it for like 10 minutes or so until your bacon gets nice and brown. And then you toast up um, just your favorite kind of hot dog bun. Stick it in there. Put some condiments on it, whatever you like. I like mustard. I have a picture of the final product here, but I will tell you it's not the prettiest picture. It just looks like a hot dog with a bunch of stuff on it. But this is like maybe the tastiest hot dog that I have ever eaten truly better with bacon and just a really fun and easy way to make hot dogs for a bunch of people. So I'll be doing this forever, probably. Loved it. What a good find. Yeah, my mouth's watering. <laughs> but I'm wondering, do you, so when you grilled it, you just grilled it right on the, on the rack? Yep. I mean, on the grates? Yeah. And then with the pickle in it when you grab yes. it? Interesting. Yeah. yeah. And it all actually, it says to put toothpicks in the end of your hot dogs to hold the bacon on, but really it all stuck together without it. It was really turned into a nice little package once you wrap it in the bacon. It sounds awesome. Great tailgate idea that mm. would delight folks, I'm sure. I, um, yeah, I want, I can't wait to, to make that. I'm just imagining like on a nice fall Saturday, throwing them on the grill, games on, yum. 
Yeah, you know, me too. And like crap too, like, you know, yeah, you have people do it themselves. You set out the ingredients sure. and just, yeah. Yeah. And you could get creative with different kinds of cheeses and pickles and things like that too. If you really wanted to, if you were going to do it like buffet style, for sure, that would be super fun. Yeah. Right. I, like it. I could see <laughs> some, the whole, all ages really liking that. Mm -hmm. I'm Good nummy. Point. Good point. For sure. All right, Matt, <clears throat> tell us about your bacon recipe. I sure will. Um, so I uh, just Googled bacon forward recipes the first thing that came up was a bacon tomato jam. And I said, that's my jam. And so I made it, it came from uh, uh, food and wine. I'm just gonna pull it up here. Um, and it called for a 12 ounces of thick cut bacon cut into quarter inch dice, so about two and a quarter cups, a large yellow onion diced, three garlic cloves, one jalapeno, seeded and minced, kosher salt, pepper, quarter cup of dark brown sugar, or I use just brown sugar, quarter cup of apple cider vinegar, and a medium tomato cored and cut. Um, so you cook your bacon and you remove it, you know, with a slotted spoon and transfer it to a bowl, but um, pour off all but two tablespoons of the fat. You add your gar onion, garlic, and jalapeno, excuse me, to, I used a casserole dish, uh, add salt and pepper to the onion salt and caramelized, and then um, add your bacon, I think, yeah, and then the tomato, the tomato paste after, uh, mix it all up, and what I did with it was I used it on um, crackers with goat cheese, but then I also, we ended up having it, I made it for when we went away for a weekend. So we had it on a breakfast sandwich with eggs and it was so good, you guys. And the, but the only one, of the thing about this recipe said it was, um, it, it lasts in the refrigerator for two weeks. Well, I've had it for like two weeks and maybe three days. And so I looked it up. I Googled it again, just to see what it what a robot would say. And um, it said uh, two, three, three weeks refrigerated and you can freeze it up to six months. So I'm going to take some to free just to, I have about, it made two cups. So I have, you know, enough to just put away. Uh, so good. So good. I liked it. Yum. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So did I, did I hear you correctly that the, the tomato product, the only tomato product in there is tomato paste? Is that right? Uh, tomato. Uh, oh, no, I missed that. But, yeah, there chopped up tomato. tomato. Okay. Which oh. I didn't. Yeah, you have oh. tons of tomatoes. Yeah, that sounds and you know awesome. What, you know what it tasted just like? Because it really is just like, I don't know if you remember that sauerkraut dish I made. It's all the same ingredients, but with the roast, you know, like caramelized sauerkraut. It's just like that but without the sauerkraut. Does it sit, it does it, did you, is there any sort of time it's supposed to like rest in the fridge? Is it supposed to like sit for several days or is yeah, it- Yeah, you let it, you just, oh, good question. I think you do, you let it sit for several hours. Okay, and then- Yeah. To, okay. But even after, like, as I was tasting it and putting it in the jar, I was like, holy moly, mm -hmm. this- is ridiculous. That's what I said. This is, except I added a different kind of qualifier, but, um, so yeah, uh, that was so yummy. I hope you get to try it. I'll even bring you some if you want, but we don't know how reliable that will be. <laughs> uh, anyway, well, Elizabeth, oh, I didn't say though, I do have some pictures. I have it in the pan and with the goat cheese. Okay. Elizabeth. Yeah, so I did the same thing as Beth, and I just kind of Googled and perused some recipes with bacon. And I'm actually going to share two today, which I know is kind of not conventional, but I made them together. So I served them at the same time. Um, and I partly did that because I find I love bacon, but I don't prepare it often because it's kind of a mess. And 
it's not, you know, it's not super great for you. So I, I often, if I use like part of a package of bacon, I end up throwing the rest out because it goes bad in my fridge, which I know is like a crime against humanity. But I was just like, you know, I want to just use up this whole package and like not have it go to waste. So I ended up making two recipes and they're both pretty short. So this will not, I promise I won't be chatting at you for um, ages, but um, the first one was kind of unconventional, uh, not unconventional. It was just something, it was unusual. I picked it because it was just weird. So it was for creamy pasta with bacon and red cabbage. And I was like, huh. Um, so it ended up being really easy. Um, I'm going to say right at the start that I probably am not going to make this again, just because it did not wow me. It was completely fine to eat, but whatever. Um, so basically you take a pound of short pasta, you cook it in salted boiling water, blah, 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 usual. Then you cook your bacon, remove with a slotted spoon, put it on a paper towel. You're adding a medium thinly sliced red onion to the pan that you cook the bacon in. You kind of toss it to coat it in the bacon fat, cook it for a couple minutes, and then you add four cups of thinly sliced red cabbage. And you kind of toss all that together. And I liked this tip. It said, cook until the cabbage is tender, but maintains its vibrant color. You season with salt and pepper. Then you throw the pasta and bacon back in the skillet. You add a cup of heavy cream and a quarter cup of grated um, Parmesan. And then you just kind of toss it until everything is glossy and you top with some fresh parsley. So um, it was good. The cabbage and onion turned out better than I expected. It was pretty heavy. So it, like, it was just not something that I'm going to keep, I'm not going to make it regularly, but it, it was good. And the bacon and cabbage, I don't know. It was kind of unlike the flavors just came together in a way that I had not had before with the cream and everything. So anyway, with that, I knew I wanted to use up the rest of the bacon and I wanted more like, veg. So I made a recipe that is a keeper to me to accompany it, which was broccoli salad with cheddar and warm bacon vinaigrette. Um, and so this was also really easy. Um, you, uh, you know, cut the broccoli into little stems and then you just boil it in boiling water for like 60 seconds. And then it said transfer to a bowl of ice water to shock it and stop the cooking. Um, and then you just set it aside. So I did that. And then in a skillet, you're going to toast some pecans um, and then set those aside. And then in that same skillet, you add your um, <clears throat> four ounces of d diced bacon. You render that until it's um, crispy. And then you add in a couple teaspoons of Dijon mustard, a couple teaspoons of red wine vinegar, four green onions sliced um, and you just kind of put that all together. And then in a large bowl, you combine the broccoli, the bacon, the pecans, the sauce you've made. Um, it called for a cup of halved seedless red grapes and then four ounces of aged white cheddar crumbled or sliced very thinly. Um, similar to Katie's recipe, the older, the better on this one. So I did pick up some like nicer white cheddar and, um, this was delicious. This I want to make again. The pecans were amazing. The bacon Dijon vinaigrette, delicious. Um, the grapes were a nice little burst of sweetness. Uh, Broccoli was great. The ice bath was a little bit of a pain, but I think worth it when you're doing this kind of thing and you want it to maintain a little bit of crunch. Um, and yeah, I loved this. So this was the real star of kind of the two recipes that I served together. And this I definitely want to make again. Um, so I do have a photo of the pasta uh, here, but I forgot to take a photo of the broccoli salad. Unfortunately, the the better of the two, I don't have the photo of, but um, that I highly recommend. And both recipes, really easy. If listeners want to try them, it's, you know, you don't need any, it's not complicated, but um, that broccoli salad with bacon is definitely uh, a keeper. 
And I, I don't know, that's not how I've like traditionally made broccoli salad. Usually I make creamy. So I don't know what you guys do, but I'd be curious to hear because that was a little bit of a twist for me. Yeah, definitely. I just sounded like an elevated version of the broccoli salad that I've been eating my whole life. <laughs> you know, like with without that like mayo to it and with the grapes instead of raisins right. and you've got right. the, the pecans in it. Like it sounds like just like what I grew up eating, except way better. <laughs> right. No, <laughs> so, I'm with yeah. you. I always had the raisins and the mayo, you know. Yeah, yeah same. that's always. awesome. I what really yeah. find. I like that we you can I mean my go-to, I can make the other one in my sleep, you know, yeah. but um so it'll it will be nice to try a different thing because I often do wonder about what other kind of uh you know broccoli salad. Hmm, I wonder how you could ever learn about other broccoli salads. <laughs> um but uh very nice. And I also think about the the um the pasta one. I feel like you could get by with without the cream or maybe just a touch mm -hmm. just to get it a little bit liquidy, but you could also just use the pasta water. I, I would, um, I like that because yeah, I like that the cabbage and parm is, um, yeah, it was, it was good. And I think you're completely right, Beth. I think the cup of heavy cream kind of threw me off. Cause I was just like, Whoa, you know, but you could, you could do a splash or mm -hmm. you could, and just like you used to do the pasta water and toss it because there's already the bacon fat, you know, so you yeah. don't need. Mm -hmm. So, you know, maybe I will give it another go with with without the cutting the cream out. Which, you oh, know. Yeah, a little lighter. Yeah, I like that, though. It's worth it. And I think you could do it with green too, green cabbage. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. One thing that I wanted to mention to you, Elizabeth, just as a tip, is that I'll take kitchen shears and cut up bacon package in half and throw half of it in the freezer just you know that yes. time you don't want to use the whole package no that's so smart and I always you know me I'm a little I'm organized but I'm a little chaotic so I'm usually like ripping open the package and then I'm like <laughs> oh, you know sure <laughs> so I need to remember the like in advance like you know freezer so yeah, yeah. That or like I mentioned before, we um we'll just make make some bacon and then we have it in the fridge, or you can even put it in the in the freezer, chop it up and save it. So yeah. Don't or just I need to just bacon. like make a BLT for lunch, you know. I'm yes. just, or true. dinner. True. Yeah. Cool. Well, great episode, everyone. Hopefully folks make some of our suggestions and I will say thank you for watching Recipe Share and be sure to click the link below to look at the event page on aadl.org to find the recipes we talked about and feel free to share your own in the comments. Join us next time when we will be talking about smart substitutions. We're looking forward to seeing what you've been making, so thanks for sharing. Recipe share, recipe share, share a little recipe.